I think the first place to start is with what catches your eye and what stands out to you. So I would ask somebody new to this image to make a list, a, a simple outline of the things that seem most notable or most noticeable. For some people, it might be the eagle on the cactus. For others, it'll be the tiny little skull rock that'll catch their eyes. From, for others, it will be the boundary or the frame at the outside of the painting. From there, I think, once you have the list, it becomes important to look at the whole composition of the image, how the painting is laid out on the paper. Beyond that, once you have a sense of how things are placed, then I would ask you to talk about or to begin to grapple with how those pieces that were noticeable to you appear within part of a larger whole. Ultimately, I think it becomes important to be able to translate the language of the painting. What is it that that eagle on the cactus refers to? What are those two conquest scenes down below the square of the Mexican City Canals? What is that little fire drill? But I think it's important first to begin to ask yourself, what are the elements of the visual representation before one begins to ask, what do they all mean? The other thing that's important to realize is that what these things mean will change over time and from person to person. For the man who painted these elements, no doubt the eagle on the cactus or the conquest of Tenayukan over on the right side of the painting meant something quite different than it did to the viceroy who commissioned it or the French pirate who stole the manuscript as part of a large group of Spanish treasures. So I would ask somebody or help somebody begin to find sources for examining all the different ways a single work of art may have made meaning. Because it's important to realize that there's no such thing as a single meaning for any particular object, any work of art. That there are always competing ones. Skulls, sacrifice, those are always big topics in the Aztec world. And people are very curious about why there is a skull as part of a representation of the founding of Mexico City. And I think actually that's a very good question, one that opens on to a lot of very important things about the way the Aztecs actually behaved and the way they understood their role in the universe. So I would not say that it is important to notice one specific part of this painting any earlier or before you notice any other part, but that actually any place you start can lead you towards a good understanding of what the Aztec artist was trying to convey or at least what we understand today, what he was trying to convey in the past.